Good morning, artists. Happy Friday. Bright, sunny day today. It's supposed to be nice and warm. Get outside. Do something fun. We're going to be doing a little more drawing today on our uh, Earth character. You guys have your assignment that's due today, so make sure that you're getting that turned in. And we're going to just keep on going. New assignment starting on Monday, so be ready to see uh, the demonstration for that. I hope you guys can come out and make it live. Um, but let's just get right to it today, I guess. Let's just turn you around and... There we go. So still working on our cool little earth lady here. Doing some inking today. If you were here yesterday, her design was giving me a little trouble trying to figure out what to do with her. Trying to still make it look like she is an earth goddess without going too overboard. Trying to ride that line between something new and something familiar. I actually been talking about something similar with my sister the other day. Um, she had gotten an art book that was uh, supposed to be depicting the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Dark stuff, yeah. But each of the artists got to choose, you know, which horsemen to do and what they were supposed to look like. And when I was looking through the art book, yeah, you know, I was naturally trying to figure out, without looking at uh, which one was which, trying to figure out what character that they had picked. And in some cases it was pretty obvious, and in other cases it was <laughs> very much not obvious. And it was really making me think about, when you have a character, how do you get a certain idea across about them? and still make it original. How much can you use certain ideas about that character so that it's still recognizable without becoming just something that's too obvious? So like if you look up pictures of like an earth goddess or Gaia or anything like that, you're usually going to find a smiling, usually motherly type woman, um, sometimes even looking pregnant, usually colored in lots of blues and greens and browns. And that's just become like the default picture. Sometimes she'll be like, Maybe she's growing things out of her hair, or her hair looks uh, almost like mossy. Kind of think uh, similar to uh, the character in Moana, even. Which is a great way to think about it. In Moana, you had that lava monster, which was the quote-unquote bad guy. And it was very clear that that was meant to be a lava monster. It was very rocky looking, uh, dark skin with all sorts of cracks that were showing off a uh, molten fiery underneath. And then when she turned back into her proper form, very flowy, she had uh, her clothing almost looked like, again, like this moss idea. Her hair was very green and kind of had this tree-like feel to it. And it's great to use a common theme but at what point do you have to sacrifice it being creative 
in order to make sure people would understand what you're looking at. So like if I wasn't putting leaves on her, would you still register her as like an earth goddess? If it wasn't a tree in the middle, would you still think, well, yeah, she's earthy. But if I don't have that, if I took that out, like you might not know what she is. But if I leave it in, is it then too obvious? Important questions. I think they're important questions. It's the kind of stuff that you guys would probably start really thinking on when you get into like high school. Motivations and themes and things like that. So this is me having learned my lesson on the Venus character. You need to do the fringing before coloring. Scoop it on up, scoop it on up. This might be a little bit on the nose too, adding what looks like an actual leaf, but I feel like it kind of mimics a little bit what was on our sun lady. Maybe we'll play around with the, uh, the colors a bit. I mean, the obvious answer would be to make it some kind of a green, but again, you don't want to be too obvious. Looking pretty good. So today is Friday, which is anime day at my house. I'm a little bit sad though. One of uh, the shows that we started watching um, has been kind of put on hiatus for now. Because the studios have had to do some closing. They haven't had a, a chance to really work on it. And it was starting off as a fairly interesting concept. If a little bit out there. It's a story about a... Like the main character thus far is a, a officer. Who works for um, the police department, obviously. We know that he was recently part of a higher division. A group of officers that pretty much looks like they handle real kind of important cases. Uh, things like pr protecting incoming diplomats and whatnot. Almost secret service -y. They're always in like suits and such but that he is no longer with them. I forget if they've given a clear reason why yet. But he ended up moving down to a lower division that is mostly handling, you know, like the uh, 
smaller time crimes, robberies, things like that. But another gentleman decides he's going to join their group and he is some kind of billionaire. I mean, the, the, the show is kind of titled um, Balance Unlimited, meaning that he, there, is no, uh, <laughs> there is no final number on how much money he has. And he shows up and is like wanting to help solve crimes and he's incredibly smart at like a he's not quite batman but he his attitude is um very plain he doesn't speak much but he'll like drive down a street trying to catch a criminal and crash his car so then he'll jump out of his car and go up to another person and be like i need your car and that person is like well i'm not just gonna give it to you and he's like, okay, well, how much? And he's like, what? Do you, what? He's like, oh, and, you know, the guy's joking. Oh, it'll be three million. He goes, okay. And he just uses his little kind of like electronic computer that he keeps with him and deposits $3 million in his bank account and takes the car and drives off. Like, ta-da, problem solved. You know, he crashes a bunch of cars along the way. The drivers all come to the police station to complain, and he just pays him back. <laughs> they catch a couple of guys that they suspect are uh, drug dealers and they got them in two rooms and they've got like their master interrogator in, in one room slowly guilting him into confessing what happened and then he comes walking out of the other room and, <laughs> and he's got the answer as well but the guy behind him is just cheering over the fact that he just made a whole ton of money like he just deposited a bunch of money in his account to get him to confess and of course the cop guy hates it because you know that's not that's not how you do things you can't just you can't just pay off the criminal to get the information you can't just fling your money around so it feels like there's going to be um a very interesting and deep message to it so i'm a little bit sad that it's been uh Taken off the air for now. I'm looking forward to when that comes back on. It's kind of a quiet spring season right now. Now that like a uh, My Hero Academia and uh, IQ have both ended for now. We need more anime, guys. I know a couple of you are out there are anime fans. Be nice to uh get some fresh stuff in there. Once my classes that I've been taking have finished and things have settled down at school again, it'd be nice to consider uh, starting up a new uh, anime club. I ran one for years at my old school, and it was always a good time. A lot of good, good, good kids got to meet, um, especially those that weren't able to take art, but they still liked anime. Get all my nerds together. Miss my nerds. Slow down by the toes. I think I'm finally starting to get the hang of them. Got some more of this 
asymmetrical designs, yes. I probably should be outlining using my wider pen. I'm gonna end up going over and making most of these lines thicker anyway. But if I make a mistake, it's a little bit easier to fix when the line starts off as being thin. Okay, okay, okay. It seems like it takes about about a day or so to do the drawing and get the outlining started. And then maybe half hour. Well, I say a day. It takes about an hour for the drawing portion and maybe some of the outlining. The rest of the outlining takes maybe half an hour to an hour, depending on the amount of detail going on. Give or take, about an hour. And then the coloring on average has taken about two hours, sometimes a little more, depending on uh, if I have my ideas already set up for what colors to use. So what is that? Is that about? It's math now. It's an hour for the drawing, about another hour for inking, about two to three hours, so about five hours total to do one of these guys. It's not awful. I guess what that means is that I might get the system done by the summer. <laughs> The real question will be, do I do all of the system? I mean, the planets are kind of a given at this point. I'm drawing where the back of this little skirt is going, because then I need to use that to determine where the fringe is going, so that I can add... background there, fringe, we'll have it go in just a slightly different direction, mostly just focusing on where it's going to stop. And if you squint at it, you can kind of see where it is. In any case, as we start erasing, the planets are kind of a given at this point. Now, here's where we run into trouble. 
Pluto. Planet or dwarf planet. Pretty much science has now declared it to be a dwarf planet, meaning it is the best way to explain this. Where's some scrap paper? I know, I'm sorry. This is this is getting into science, you guys, but you know, it's it fascinates me anyway. So that's why we're talking about it. So you've got the sun. Boop, 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 boop. I know sticks on the sun are bad, but just so we can identify it easier. There you go. I could just do the actual symbol for the sun, which is a circle and then a dot in the middle. But in any case, the sun is the bright star. It is it is the point of light. It is on fire. All that good stuff. A planet is the thing that goes around the sun. So like Earth. It's a very rough idea of Earth, but there it is. And that goes around the sun. So the sun is a star. All suns are stars. I think what makes it a sun is that it has planets. I'm not positive though, but we'll get to that. So we'll do, maybe just the word sun just applies to ours. So sun dash star, planet goes around the sun. A moon goes around a planet. That's all very clear. But then we get to things like Pluto. And it has a moon, Charon. Spelt funny, but there it is. Pluto, if I remember right, does not have a normal orbit. When the planet goes in a circle around the sun, Pluto, I think, does more of an, an oval-like shape. Plus, it's very small. Pluto itself is actually smaller than one of Jupiter's moons. This is not to actual size, just so you know. Jupiter is much bigger from Earth than this. But for the sake of this, you get the right idea. It's little moon there. Is Ganymede. Named after a creature, person in Greek mythology. Ganymede goes around Jupiter. Pluto is smaller than Ganymede. So because its orbit is a little different, and because it's smaller than almost every other planet, it gets the title of a dwarf planet. So planet being something that goes around the sun, dwarf planet is about size. So it's a little bit sad to be able to say that, you know, Pluto is not really a planet like the rest of them. He's kind of on the outside, but... That's not saying I'm not going to include Pluto. I like Pluto. I want to include Pluto. But if I include Pluto, I need to include the other dwarf planets. And there are a couple more that are just outside our system, or just past Pluto. Um, there is Haumea. There is whoop, Maki Maki. Um, is the other one Vesta? Let me double check. I'm pretty sure. There's a couple that I think that are outside that they've discovered. But there's one, you guys. There's Earth. There's Mars. And then there's the asteroid belt, which is tons of asteroids in a circle that go around our planet. And there is... Within that asteroid belt is another dwarf planet. Ceres. So there's been another Pluto that's been hiding out in this asteroid belt, following us around. Who was the other one? Pluto? How am I? And Eris. That was the other one.
So that's where I run into this problem whenever I do something solar system related. I want to include Pluto because I grew up believing Pluto was one of the planets and that was just, that was how it was. I mean, Sailor Moon was one of my favorite shows and it was all the characters in Sailor Moon were based off of different planets and one of them was Pluto. Ironically, she was the tallest <laughs> and probably one of the more powerful of the group. Even though it's like the tiniest planet. So my instinct is to include Pluto. But how can I include Pluto if I don't do the rest? <laughs> or Pluto gets scared, gets bullied. <laughs> But yeah, if I, if I include Pluto, good morning, Kenneth, by the way, um, I have to include the other dwarf planets because, you know, that's my OCD needing to complete it. And I'm pretty sure there's even some more dwarf planets that they've started to discover uh, even further out than Pluto and the other three. Um, I'll have to look it up again. I remember when I was preparing for these characters that um there was one I was like I don't remember that name she, she's great all right next up color let's get our color pencils closer All right, we're gonna start with the greens because the greens are gonna be kind of our lighter tone in all of this. So uh, let's get, we're gonna get some brighter green. We're gonna get kind of a less <laughs> brighter green. And then we're gonna get um, this nice peacock green that we're gonna play around with for all of our green areas which is pretty much going to be the leaves we're gonna we're gonna be a little more uh what do you want to call it a little more expected i guess is the best way to put it we expect the green leaves i could probably switch these up and make them blue in which case they would end up looking like raindrops but we'll save it Oh, poop, I forgot to do the other part of the inking. That won't do, nope, but first, okay. Getting ahead of myself, getting ahead of myself. Let's get the little leaf in here. And because I'm a bum, I forgot to go back and do my extra inking. So what I like to do here is I go through and I will kind of darken up certain areas to try and help give a better sense of depth. So areas that might have a shadow, I'll go in and add a little darker, thicker line to. And when something like this size is going to be a little bit darker. I'll curve the corner even just to help create even more of a, a shadowy feel. Or like this is on top. So not only does it create a shadow underneath everything from that, in the areas like here, I want to create a little more shadow. I want to create a hint that this is on top by darkening right here a little bit. What this helps do, not only does it help to create a kind of a, a feeling of 
of depth to things. There's a little more of a 3D feel to it. Um, it also really helps for those areas when um, I've had an oops. So areas that I've made darker, like right here, to hide the fact that I, my pen slipped a little bit, by then going through and darkening the lower areas around it, it makes that part stand out a little less. It makes everything feel a little more on purpose. I've gotten asked a couple times um, with a lot of my artwork on being accused of like printing it. Like, oh, you found that and printed it out. And I just attribute that to my mad inking skills. too much on this tree though because it's already pretty thin so adding a thicker line is gonna look a little strange so just gonna, in a couple places if I don't do it and I'm doing all these other lines around it a lot thicker it'll end up standing out in a bad way so it needs a little something also help with right here making the line of her body stand out a little more despite all the fringes
So it just looks so much better. The difference between the top right now, it has those little bit extra lines. And then the bottom, it doesn't yet. So coming up on Monday, guys, is May the 4th, which some of my nerds, y'all know what that means, is our Star Wars day. Now, in the past, especially at uh, my previous school, where our nerdiness was um, a little better, a little more well-known. I would bring Starburst, get it, Star, Starburst, or, um, and anyone that came up and properly greeted me with, may the fourth be with you, would get a Starburst. And it was funny because there were some of the kids that you knew got it, and there were some of the kids that saw their friend get the candy. Whoa, whoa, why'd you get candy? And they would explain, and go say, may the fourth be with you. And they'd come up and they'd say it, and there'd be a little bit of a question of like, may the fourth be with you? Like they didn't quite understand why they were saying it. You can still get their candy though. Sometimes I would explain it if they needed an explanation. Some kids would just be like, why are they getting candy? And be like, because of today. They knew what to say. What would I have to say? Oh, no, I can't tell you. Go figure it out. Pretty sure I had a um, Starburst with me last year, but there weren't too many kids that uh, really knew it. It's a different group. Not everyone's into Star Wars. But I will have my Star Wars shirt on. Put on some of the movies. Do a little Star Wars binging. I have no idea what you just typed to me. <laughs> and Milky Way, Larry Beth, that would be pretty good too, actually. But it's a galaxy far, far away from ours. It can't be a Milky Way. <laughs> but you're right, that would be a good one. Or I could just get nerds and, you know, just, you know, stop pretending, right? I know it got popular and, and it still is. People are uh, still going on about the, uh, the last Star Wars movie. And it it was it was a hot mess. It was it was a complete hot mess. But I also feel like I can't really hate it because I kind of I kind of you know I I get it. It was you know it was two direct. The last trilogy was two directors that were just felt like they were at war with each other. And one was like, I created a cool idea. 
go. I don't want to deal with the rest of it. And it seems like that's the thing that, that J.J. Abrams does a lot is, you know, comes up with a, a cool thing that he throws out into the universe and then he's like, I'm done. <laughs> And who's the other one? Ryan Johnson. Is it Ryan Johnson? I think that's his name. Who did uh, the second one, Last Jedi. Which had its problems, but I don't think it deserved as much of the hate as it got. I'm going to say it. I'm going to put it out there. Come at me. But I got what he was trying to say, and I appreciated that for what it was. And then they brought J.J. back because they're like, oh my gosh, so many people hated that movie. And he's like, fine, I'll just go back and try to recreate all the stuff that I had thought about from the first movie. But, you know, I didn't bother to tell anybody. I didn't really pass on my ideas. So they took it and ran with it in a different direction. It's almost like playing telephone in a weird way. Like, somebody told a story, and the other person was like, okay, I'm going to continue the story, but I'm going to, you know, make it up. Or no, not telephone. What's that game where it's like round robin? Where one person starts a story, and then the next person keeps going. And the first person is like, that's not what I wanted you to do with my story. And But they don't understand how round, round robin works. So they just decided, I'm just going to go back <laughs> to my original idea. But you can't because somebody has, already, somebody has already changed part of your story. You can't just go back and say, I'm going to pretend that, you know, some of those things didn't happen. I don't like that you made up a new character. I'm going to get rid of them and, like, hide them in the background and put a different character in. And <laughs> I don't like that you did this to my main character, so I'm going to do something to make her more special again. It really just felt like a... A, a person didn't understand how round robin is supposed to work. But I still like Ray. I think she was done dirty though. Kenneth, you like the last Jedi most. See, and and I'll I. I would probably agree with that. I would, I, I would, I would be with you on that one. Um, Force Awakens was fine. It, it, it felt safe. I mean, I liked it. It was good. Last Jedi took it in such a different direction, and I'm, and you're definitely sitting there like, what, what now? What can happen now? Like everything that you expected was kind of gone, and that was great. And there and there were some ridiculous things like the whole casino thing and the whole super slow chasing down of the ships. I mean, there were some th things there that were a little bit questionable. Like there was a, in a lot of ways, it, it, it did have some elements of Empire Strikes Back. Because Empire Strikes Back, you had uh, Luke leave the group. Like, they're fleeing from the Empire, and he leaves to go and, and do some Jedi training. And they're like, okay, yeah, sure, bye. And he doesn't really know what is going to happen to them. Like, they're they're being chased. Like, Han and Leia were being chased by the Empire through the asteroid belt, you know, and they, they managed to eventually get away, sort of. I mean, they end up getting caught, of course, once they get to uh, the Cloud City Bespin. But it was a very similar thing. Ray, Ray goes off to, to train with the, you know, hermited Jedi Master while her friends are in a, a situation she doesn't really know because she, she left them, essentially. I mean, they weren't in dire, in entirely dire straits when she left because they had just finished exploding um, Starkiller Base. And she eventually has to rush back in and help them, kind of like the way that Luke did. Except Luke Luke got his butt handed to him. He lost his hand. Poor thing. Spoilers, um, by the way. <laughs> Spoilers for this 30-year-old um, movie.
But I tell you, I hate, I hate the hate that goes on about Ray. All these people arguing that, you know, how can she lift rocks and, and, and do force things and she's never been trained. It's like, Luke wasn't trained. He spent a couple hours with Obi-Wan and he was able to uh, use the force with the little droid thingy, the little target droid, and, and was able to use it to help blow up the Death Star and he only had a couple hours of training. But Rey, who has grown up on stories of the Force. I mean, Luke didn't even really know about it. I mean, he's like, what's the Force? And Obi-Wan has to explain it to him. Rey grew up knowing about it. She knew that it was out there. She heard the stories of what people were able to do with it. So it makes perfect sense that once she realizes that she has some Force ability, why would she not try it out? Why would she not? It's like, I've got, I've got force ability. Maybe I can control the stormtrooper's mind. Of course you can. Force is about will. It's about your strength of will. And she got that. My girlfriend's got that. All right. Fix the pending problems. Can the someone call you an idiot for liking The Last Jedi? Well, they're an idiot. <laughs> Let's say it back at them. No one's an idiot for liking things. That's just... That's silly. That's just silly. I mean, I can... I would definitely argue that, you know, there's... Some people, when they consume certain media, that you might... It might make you a little bit nervous. Like... Everybody who's watched the Tiger King and is now out there screaming about how obviously Carol Baskin killed her husband and now we have to uh, find the evidence to convict her. It's like, this is, guys, this is, this is, it's been, it's been a long time. They, if, if there was evidence, they would have found it. You know, like, you don't understand the medium of this documentary right now. Like, it's still just a show. They're still just presenting you with some of the ideas. Calm down. <laughs> but people get all worked up about it. But I think in the case of like, especially with Star Wars, somebody saying that they liked a certain movie over than the others, there's, I think you need to have a conversation about it, you know? Like, I like, like, I'll, I, I will say, I liked The Last Jedi. People can be like, oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. It was a stupid movie. Be like, well, there were ridiculous parts, but there's ridiculous parts to all of them. I mean, you can't hold um, it against The Last Jedi for having a ridiculous um, casino side plot when in the original trilogy they had um, C-3PO being crowned King of the Ewoks. <laughs> I mean, it's fun. There, there's, there's going to be silly things. There's going to be some, some campy things. You know, it's just have a discussion about it. Point out the things that you like and you dislike, and let's move on. But no, no. I like a thing. You don't like that thing. Therefore, you must be wrong and bad. Like, you know, people can have different opinions on something like this. I adore Haikyuu. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. Um, my good friend does not care for Haikyuu. That doesn't make her wrong or bad. It just means, you know, that was, that's her opinion. She's not into sports anime like I am. Kenneth knows a big prequel fan. I hear that. I think that a lot of the people who enjoyed the prequel are the people that that was kind of like their 
first big experience with it. I mean, I grew up with the original. Um, I was I was super young. I, I wasn't even born when uh, the first one came out, but the others came out, and by the time they made you know made it to playing on TV or when we got finally on um, on VHS. You youngins don't even know what a VHS is. Hold on a second. Sharpening. But when it came out on VHS, my dad being the awesome sci-fi nerd that he is, got him. So I got introduced to Star Wars long before. I was a, and still am, a big Luke Skywalker fan. Everyone else was all like, Han Solo's the best. And I'm like, no, man. Luke is. More sharpening. <laughs> Sneaking a tiny bit of dark green into these. We're going to blend them out, too. No, I was a fan of Luke. He, he was my favorite. I loved his little tragicness and his all black emo that he wore later on so when the prequels happened i was in was i in college by then oh my goodness yeah i think i was and that was exciting i was like yay glad for more star wars but it was also became very baffling the first one had some very strange moments like yes let's put the child in the uh in the cockpit of this flyer and you don't think he's gonna do something with it it's like this kid runs pod races which is also ridiculous to think that he could do that force or not you don't put like a little baby in there there were grown adults throwing dynamite at him i mean come on in any case if you grew up with the originals, you had, you know, certain feelings about what Star Wars was supposed to be. So, of course, when you get a new Star Wars, you're going to feel that there was something about that that was different. And I know that that was a big sticking point for a lot of people when they got to the sequels. Now, I thought the prequels were okay. Obviously, again, it's just like any of them. There are certain parts of it that are just bizarro and weird and... Why did why why did you ever think that Jar Jar was a good idea, and why did you make the uh, the Trade Federation like weirdly Asian? You know, like it, it, there were some parts that you're kind of like, eh, that's, I don't know how I feel about that choice right there. You know, I don't hate on anybody who liked the uh, the prequels. I'm just kind of like, yeah, it's fine. I mean, as long as you can look at them and, and accept the things that didn't make sense or the things that were a stretch or Hayden Christensen's horrible acting... Like you, as long as you can acknowledge the, the things that did well and the things that didn't do well, I don't see a problem. I think if somebody tried to argue with me, the prequels are the best. And I was like, eh, you know, I hear your opinion, but I, I disagree, and here's why. No, I don't want to hear your reasons. Okay, but now you're, you're just, now you're just being ridiculous. Have a conversation. We People, we need to have more productive conversations in our country, I think. I'm not going to go into it, but I'm just throwing this out there. Productive conversations, please. Let's not yell at each other. Let's not get in each other's faces and scream about why we're right. Let's have a sit down and have a discussion and figure everybody's feelings out. Anyway, back to Star Wars. I thought that Rey was a great character. I liked the idea that we're taking somebody who, in, in, in 
kind of putting the last movie aside for a second, um, the nobody from nowhere idea. That you could just have somebody who was able to use the Force. And that's what Anakin was. So anybody saying that, why is she able to use the Force? Like, Anakin didn't even know about it. And he was able to do all his pod racing stuff. So any arguments that I hear about how Rey is overpowered, no, I'm sorry. You just you just don't have, have a, a, the better understanding of the world. Of course, she knows about the Force. She's grown up knowing about the Force. There have probably been situations where she has employed some level of forceness <laughs> without really realizing it. And that's all fine. And we need to accept it. Kenneth, I totally agree with you about the Metachlorians. It is definitely in our nature to want to be able to measure and quantify something. And if that's how the Jedi figured it out, then yay. It didn't help in the end, though, did it? Because, I mean, Anakin having the highest Metachlorian count that they've ever seen... They were still like, nah, we don't want to train him. <laughs> Their system is very strange, to be honest. Actually, one of the things I'd been hoping for after The Last Jedi was when they're showing off, um, they got all those cool Jedi books that Rey ends up with that she can start to learn from. I thought that there was a hint happening, especially if you look at the artwork that was on the floor of the Jedi Temple, that they were trying to possibly propose the idea that you could be a Force user and not have to have a side. I mean, the Force has been, you know, a good versus evil for so long. Yeah, it's true, kind of. They couldn't measure it in the end. But there was that cool idea that maybe you could have a, a force user that uh, kind of was in the gray. That they could have emotions, because, I mean, that was another problem that the... Uh, the Jedi and the prequels had is that they were like you cannot, no you can't fall in love and you can't get married because then you experience emotion and emotion is bad because reasons I need my brush to help brush off the little fuzzies So wouldn't it be great if they could take a character like Rey, who is allowed to feel emotion, but not become overpowered by it. That she would find a way to, you know, have be, 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 be the gray in the middle. No more dark side, no more light side, just, just a yin-yang. <laughs> and she could create a new group of Jedi that could actually learn to deal with their feelings. I think that's a pretty uh, big statement there about the Jedi in general at all, is that they don't allow people to oh my goodness can you guys hear my dog up there something exciting is happening <laughs> he, 
Oh my gosh. There's gotta be there's gotta be somebody outside doing something crazy right now. <laughs> We're gonna use a lot of brown in, in this lady, but that's all right. This, uh, use this nice lighter color for the trees and the the bands and stuff. Make it look like wood. In any case, I would have liked to have seen. Ray, not only mastering her Jedi abilities, but kind of bringing things about in a new way. I mean, there were, they've now, they pointed out that, you know, there were other people that might be uh, force users. They showed that at the end of The Last Jedi with the little, uh, the little kid in his broom. He has force abilities. Kenneth, I haven't seen The Mandalorian. I do not have Disney Plus. I mean, I've heard really good things about it. And it's very tempting. But most of the stuff that's on there right now, with the exception of, like, The Mandalorian, I mean... The Marvel movies, yay. The Star Wars movies, yay. I, I have all of those. I have them all on, on DVD or Blu-ray or something. So it, 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 it doesn't make much sense for me to get it, you know? I mean, any, any of the uh, classic Disney movies that I enjoy, I have. You know, I've got The Little Mermaid and I've got Frozen. and You know, I've... So... If we get to a point where, you know, there's even more Marvel-type stuff, then I might end up getting Disney+. Plus. We'll see. It's too much streaming. Too many streaming services. But they're saying that um, movie theaters are not doing so hot right now, so I don't know. We might end up uh, turning to a lot more stuff being online. I almost wonder if they're going to get to a point where they're just we're going to lose television. Almost, I mean. Yeah, I know there's some Marvel shows that are coming up. I don't know how, uh, I don't know how excited I am for that. I'm definitely not sure how I feel about, uh, WandaVision. I mean, Vision, Vision's, Vision's gone. So if they're like, this is the alternate universe. If we're gonna if we're gonna start having uh, multiple universes really starting to become a thing, I'm I'm not thrilled about that. I mean that just it's one thing to have kind of like a fun movie like Into the Spider Verse, and you've got the multiple dimension idea, but bringing that into the whole cinematic universe. It, it just takes away any kind of stakes you might have. You know? Black Widow died, but we could get Black Widow from another dimension. Or <laughs> Tony's, Tony Stark is dead, but maybe he could be in another dimension. Like, no, 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 no. No, thank you. Falcon and Winter Soldier, yeah, I, I'm i not opposed to that. But what I am worried about is the fact that they are being moved into uh, 
a series, like a television series type universe. Because that kind of feels like when that happens, we're not going to see them anymore in the movies because the series is going to move at a different pace. And I feel like that would be such a mistake for the, uh, the universe as a whole to move characters out of the movie setting because you're st you're going to have people kind 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 of like me in a way that don't have Disney Plus who don't want to watch an entire series just to get some nuances of a character and then not understand what they're doing when it comes to the movie. So kind of like when they um when they made Agents of Shield and Coulson dies in this in the in the movie universe we find out in the series that no he's still alive but he does not return to the movie verse he is still dead in the movie verse and that's a huge thing because colson was connected to um especially to tony but to thor to some degree as well i mean he's the one who kind of is the first real earthling to welcome thor in a way I mean, he was a part of the building of the Avengers. So moving him to a TV show and then you don't talk about him anymore. It's just... It's a little frustrating. So that's, that's why I'm worried about the Marvel shows that are coming out on Disney that they've talked about already with uh, WandaVision and Winter Soldier. I like those characters. I, I mean, it'd be nice to still have them around, but I feel that by moving them to television, to streaming, is is they're they're just they're not going to be in the movies as much anymore. Of course, I heard that Wanda is going to be in Doctor Strange, but I'm going to be incredibly frustrated if things are going on in Doctor Strange's movie. That you need to watch WandaVision for. Like, I, just, I don't know. It, that, that puts me off. It puts me off a bit. I did like the first season of Jessica Jones. That was, that was fun. And I don't know why. I, I don't, I think I started, did I start to watch the second season? I don't even remember anymore. I watched the first season of Daredevil which was fine, and then started watching the second season. Was it, no, didn't, no, I don't even know if I got to the second season. Maybe it was the end of the first season. I just remember that my sister and I had been, were like binging some of it one day, and we both fell asleep. And when we woke up and, and the show, had, you know, like the episode had come to an end or something, we both kind of looked at each other and were like, did we both just fall asleep during the show? We did. Okay, I, I, uh, okay, we're not watching the show anymore. <laughs> I was like, oh no, okay, we fell asleep. It's, that's it. This is, yeah. If the show is not keeping us awake, then it's, we're, that's it, we're done. Speaking of, I think we're about as far as we're going to be able to get today with our lady here. She's coming along very nice, though. I'm liking these colors on her. Uh, we'll finish up with the browns and get some blues in there. And she's going to be gorgeous. All right, well, thanks for hanging out with me on this Friday, you guys. Um, I hope you have a... I hope you have a weekend. I hope that... <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but for some of us, just it, every day is kind of, kind of blurring in, but, you know, it... I hope you get a chance to do something this weekend to make it still feel like a weekend, you know, something that you can still enjoy. Um, but I'll be back on Monday when we have a new assignment coming up for my classes. And then we'll, 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 keep, we'll keep going with a little more art. We'll have some more fun. Um, happy May, you guys. And I will talk to you on Monday. So have a great rest of your day.